Pepperdine actually was um, the only place that gave me a chance. Mm. And what happened was when I was playing in club, the, um, a lot of schools all looked at my size and said, no, we can never take you. You know, there's no way that we could have a goalkeeper that small. And then um, Tim saw me play and he just was, I guess, I don't know, amazed by what I could do for being so small. And he said, that's the kind of player that we want. Waves are doing amazing things all over the world. As we continue to celebrate Pepperdine's alumni, we meet Anna Piccarelli, the goalie for the Italian national soccer team, who embodies those words uttered by Winston Churchill, never, never, never give up. She was told time and time again, no. Goalies on the international soccer scene are at least 5'10", not 5'4". I guess the naysayers didn't know that she could fly. So you have to talk about that. I mean, being a smaller goalkeeper and how you play to counteract what maybe people might think. Um, I think, like coming out on the field, I, I almost make the other teams probably laugh <laughs> just because they see me and they just think how ridiculous it is that I'm shorter than probably their entire team. And, um, and it makes them, it almost takes them out of their game a little bit because they think, well, she's short, so we're going to uh -huh. shoot high. And that's actually my strength. So they keep doing that and it takes it almost takes them out of their game because they think they have this advantage when in the end they really don't. So they cross, I go, they cross, I go, and at the end of the game they just can't figure out, well, why didn't that work? So what was your first season like playing for a club team abroad? It was really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a word of Italian, so I had to watch TV and listen to them and just figure it out. Um, I had studied it a little bit here, but as we all know, you can study a language, but it never means you actually speak it. And so I just picked it up on my own. And I don't think it was even until the second, mid-second year that I actually felt like I could speak the language without any problems. And, um, and I think that the type of playing over there is really different than over here. I mean, here in the US, we run and run and run until you, know, you can run for 120 minutes and there's no problem. But over there, they're just so technical that you know, their touch is completely out of this world compared to maybe American-style soccer, except for at the top level. In just her first season playing in Italy, Anna turned heads once again as she led her team to an Italian Cup victory in the most intense of situations, a PK shootout in the final. We were actually one of the best teams in Italy, and weren't supposed to be that year. And um, the deal that the coach had made was the other goalkeeper, who was the current national team player at the time, was going to play all the league games, and I was going to play all the cup games. Mm -hmm. And so we get to the cup, and it goes into a PK shootout at the very end. And um, nobody, like nobody in the league had any idea who I was. They're like, we know there's an American here, but we don't know if she's good or not. And I ended up saving three PKs. And we went on to win the cup. And wow. It was, it was just, it was an eye opener to all of it. Like, oh, she's pretty good. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we should probably give her more credit. And that's actually what opened the door for me was, you know, that game. And that's how the national team came up. And, everything to follow. How did your life change? This is probably going to sound really silly, but I almost felt like I was a, not a celebrity because that wasn't the case at all because it's not really that followed over there. Oh, really? But I just had this all this confidence all of a sudden that I'd been lacking all season. And you know, I went out into the middle of the, um, the plaza in Verona where I lived and I just felt I had so much more confidence. I was like, I can be here. I can really do this. And um, and it just gave me something to push for for the next, all the rest of the years that I was there. Mm -hmm. Your father's from Italy? Yes. So is he just brimming with pride to see yes. you? Yes, all the posters and, and he's got pictures and t-shirts all in his office. All it's, you know, Italy this and Italy that. So yeah, I think it's the first thing he tells people. My daughter, she plays for the Netflix. Of course. <laughs> so no, he's really proud. And he was actually the one who convinced me to go over there and try it, even when I was having trouble and I wanted to come home. He was mm -hmm. like, you know, I want to stick it out. It'll mm -hmm. be good. Now you get to be the wise one. <laughs> if you were to give advice to someone who, my goodness, is like just starting out their college career but has dreams to be a professional soccer player, what would you tell them? Wow. Um, I would tell them to not anybody tell them no. Piccarelli used those no's to fuel herself and enhance her commitment to her dream. I mean, that's what I got my whole life and it never stopped me. And I think that's one thing to do is, I mean, don't make it a competition, but really prove to yourself and prove to everyone else that you can do it. 
and I think that's the biggest thing. It's a lot of things that girls lack is the confidence to say, I can really do this mm -hmm. and work really hard to get to it.